Hi guys, Pastor Mark here. Hope you're well as we start another week of our study of Ephesians. This will be the second last week and we probably won't get into a full week next week as we conclude our whole study of the letter to uh, the church in Ephesus that Paul has wrote from <coughs> prison. We have been in the armour of God and we'll go to get in there. Firstly, thank you for joining us yesterday. I usually see online, many of you have joined us online, but thank you for those those who came and joined us as we met as a body of believers again yesterday. It was such a blessing to see your hunger and love for the word, your love for truth and righteousness. Uh, it's just it's such a blessing in my life and I believe a big part of it is through the uh, God's grace to us through this, these studies over the past few months. Thank you so much for that. Hopefully we'll continue to be able to do it. Things seem to change every day, so... Let's hope we'll be able to continue to meet. Uh, let me read the, the, the whole verse here. I was going to read it all, but I'm only going to read the, the, the verse that we're on, which is, this is about the whole armour of God, but we, we spoke about just chapter 6, 14a, and we'll move on here today. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And Paul is going through... Uh, it goes through how the whole church in Ephesus should operate and dress as believers, not just the church in Ephesus, but all churches, not physically dress, but spiritually dress every day in order to walk worthy, but truly to win the battle against the enemy. It talks about that in the first part from verse 10 up to verse 13. It talks about, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness. So it's to, it's to we are a, a, we are in war, people. Make no bone about it. We are at war. And we always have been uh, as believers, but uh, it, the, the battle is pretty huge, it seems today, not insurmountable because the, the, that belongs to the Lord, you know, and uh, I'm, no, it's not going to be, a, what's a battle to us is his easy, uh, but we are in a huge battle and uh, maybe the reason or maybe not the reason, but maybe the battle seems so huge today and I believe is because there is many so-called believers who have given up the truth of the gospel and actually become nothing more than minions for the enemy to fire at true believers uh, because they've gave up the armour, they're not girded in truth and because they're not girded in truth they cannot understand or comprehend the need for armour, they don't think they're being corrupted because they're not girded in truth uh, they're, they're definitely girded they're definitely girded with plaques that maybe say uh, hashtag this and social justice this and they'll have a voice in that but they're not standing with the shield of faith they, they seem to be the shield of faith that they're standing with seems to be a placard with felt tip pens with all sorts of writings on it today uh, but not the word uh, this many many seem to have absolutely little no their, their, their gospel shoes is taking them everywhere because they're they're not on their feet right uh, they've ending but faith because the word has not been preached to them or they don't know the word they have pretty much zero many have zero quality sort skills meaning they don't know how to understand the word and because they don't know how to understand the word and because they don't know truth uh, and it, therefore they don't understand or comprehend righteousness. They are using the word therefore to end up shutting down the gospel rather than to protect the gospel. Uh, therefore without standing in the full armour of God, not the full armour, no, it's not, you know, just parts, the full armour of God, we will never be able to take down the schemes. We'll never even, never mind be able to take down the schemes of the enemy. We don't even spot the schemes of the enemy. Many so-called believers are now siding with unbelievers uh, because they have no, they're not, they're so not girded with truth and righteousness that they don't even realise that what they're defending is lies. Uh, what they're actually defending is an attack in the gospel. Uh, it says, having girded their life in truth, we then put on the breastplate of righteousness, put on righteousness. I mentioned yesterday in my sermon from Hebrews to lay us, it says that we have to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us. And you'll never put on righteousness if you keep on sinning, uh, or if you don't even know where it is because you're not lining it up with truth. That breastplate will be nothing more than like a child's pretense armour. You know, you sometimes see kids that shows or school plays and they've got armour on us. It's made of cardboard that's it's pretense, it protects nothing, it just it just looks good and that's what so many Christians are wearing pretense armour today, 
when it's really just a placard with a sign saying something. It never protects your heart. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Hebrew word is asif and it means to be polluted. And only when we're gifted in truth and when we receive that truth that was being given as a gift, will we become unpolluted. When we know truth, we will know what we need to protect. It's only when you know truth, you know what you need to protect. But when you don't know truth, <coughs> when you're not gifted in truth, then you end up protecting the wrong things. If you do not know the truth and are not convicted, therefore, by the truth, you will no use of desire upon a breastplate of righteousness or it will be... Uh, I'll not exactly be a breastplate of righteousness, but a breastplate of unrighteousness when people are actually running from the truth and fighting against truth rather than for it. The breastplate of righteousness protects your heart. In other words, it protects your thinking. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, it says in uh, Proverbs. So the breastplate of righteousness is to protect your heart. So it's to protect your thinking, your thinking heart. But it's also to protect your bowels, as, as the Jews would call it, which is to protect your emotions and your feelings. Uh, it's to protect them from not uh, running awry or protect the lies that can corrupt them and you end up running in feelings and emotions. So, uh, so we need the breastplate of righteousness in order to protect that truth because otherwise you can hear truth but you'll never protect the truth and then when you don't protect that truth you don't protect your mind and you don't protect your emotions and you don't protect your feelings and 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 be willing to punish disobedience when it comes as it says in um 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that if you take every thought captive and line it up to the word of God line it up to the truth and be ready to punish all disobedience be ready to punish any feelings and emotions or thinking or ideas that that, that challenges that truth so the word of God really therefore is a the word of God is not just to take down the enemy from outside, it's also to help crucify any flesh that goes on inside us that rises up. So we need the word of God for both. The word of God does does the work to, to challenge the enemy outside, but also challenges the enemy and the corruption that can lie within us. Yes, we have the righteousness of God, but our, but, but our flesh is hostile to that. Uh, therefore we have to put on the breastplate of righteousness every day and therefore to walk in obedience to the word not swayed by feelings or thoughts but to take every thought captive uh, and line them up with the word of God your feelings and emotions and thoughts at times therefore they're warring against the spirit no Jesus says the spirit's willing but the flesh is weak to the disciples the breastplate of righteousness therefore keeps you in the right standing in the right alignment with God when negative things come into you from outside you or thoughts flare up inside you. Uh, you can't slouch when you're wearing the, the breastplate of righteousness. It makes you sit upright, stand upright. Uh, you can't just slouch about. It keeps your posture in line. It keeps you poised. Uh, so therefore, he put on the breastplate of righteousness is to live a holy life unto the Lord that so needed to stand there for having girded your waist with truth, having put on the plate, breastplate of righteousness. Okay, guys, see you again tomorrow. Bless you.